I call upon the Dean of the Faculty of Health Sciences to present two honorary degree candidates and to read their citations. Professor Lucille Bloomberg is a highly respected specialist in the field of infectious diseases and is widely recognized for her contribution to sustainable and groundbreaking research in this field and in the maintenance of public health. Professor Bloomberg was born in Johannesburg she matriculated from the Parktown High School for Girls and went on to study medicine at Wits, graduating in 1974. She did her internship at the J.G. Stratum Hospital and followed this with a distinguished postgraduate academic career. Her specialist qualifications include diplomas in child health, in occupational health and in tropical medicine. She later obtained a Master of Medicine degree in microbiology at Wits and subsequently became a subspecialist in infectious diseases in South Africa in 2010. She began her work experience at the Baraguanas Hospital, performing, becoming the principal medical officer at Rietfontein Hospital, which today is the Seaswood Tropical Diseases Hospital. Lucille has been a deputy director at the National Institute of Communicable Diseases since 2002. Here she was responsible for establishing the Institute's Division of Public Health, Surveillance and Response, which covers travel medicine and infectious diseases. Currently, she still continues to be a consultant in this division. Professor Bloomberg's expertise in the management of viral disease outbreaks is widely sought and is borne out by her membership of a large number of professional associations and national and international expert committees. For example, she is the past president of the Infectious Diseases Society of South Africa, an honorary life member of the Federation of Infectious Diseases Societies in Southern Africa, and a fellow of the Royal College of Physicians and Surgeons in Glasgow. At the national and regional level, she has made invaluable contributions to the various bodies. These have included the 2010 Soccer World Cup Communicable Diseases Cluster, the National Advisory Group for Immunization, the Department of Trade and Industries Biological Weapons Working Group and the South African Development Communities Working Group for Rift Valley Fever. She is currently the elected chairperson of the South African Malaria Elimination Committee and is a long-standing member of the National Outbreak and Response Team for Rabies Advisory Group to the National Department of Health. Over the past decade, she has contributed extensively to the work of many international bodies. For example, she has served on the Global Advisory Committee for the Rabies Vaccine, on the Immune Globulin Emergency Stockpile Project, and on the Advisory Committee of the Animal and Human Health for Environment and Development Program of the Wildlife Conversa Conservation Society. Her contribution to the World Health Organizations have included serving on the Collaborative Center of Mass Gatherings, the Scientific Advisory Group, for blueprint on research and development preparedness for emerging pathogens such as Ebola, Lassa and Rift Valley fever, the scientific and technical advisory group on yellow fever risk mapping, and the International Health Regulations Emergency Committee for the Democratic Republic of Congo's recent Ebola outbreak. Lucille's most recent appointment is to the Lancet Commission on One Health. Professor Bloomberg has published more than 125 peer-reviewed articles and sits on the editorial board of a number of the world's most prestigious microbiology and infectious diseases journals. In addition, she has won many prestigious awards, the most recent being the South African Medical Research Council Special Award, honoring an esteemed scientist for their contribution to health research. Professor Bloomberg is recognized both nationally and internationally for her remarkable leadership in managing and controlling infectious disease outbreaks. Apart from her widely acclaimed work in rabies and malaria, she has managed or has been intensely involved both in South Africa and beyond in the 2002 SARS outbreak, numerous tumbo and mango fly parasitic infections, various Lassa fever outbreaks, the Luja hemorrhagic fever outbreak in 2008, the recent South African listeriosis outbreak, and now during the current coronavirus pandemic. 
Undoubtedly, her expertise, commitment, and remarkable experience has resulted in many lives being saved in this country and beyond. It is against this background, Mr. Vice-Chancellor, of academic professional service excellence and leadership by one of our own graduates that it is in great honor for the University of the Witwatersrand to award Lucille Bloomberg an honorary doctorate in medicine. Mr. Vice-Chancellor, as Dean of the Faculty of Health Sciences, I have the honor to present candidates for honorary degrees. Professor Kaya Minfinyana is one of South Africa's leading academics in family medicine and a pioneer in medical education for championing community-based clinical teaching. He graduated in medicine from the University of Natal in 1977 and obtained a master's degree in family medicine from Medunza in 1984. Four years later, he established the Department of Family Medicine at the Umtata General Hospital and at the University of Transkei, which is also known as UNITRA. He would subsequently play a major role in shaping this university. He was promoted to a professorship in 1989. In 2002, he was acting Vice-Chancellor and Principal for six months and became Deputy Vice-Chancellor in 2005. In that year, the University of Transkei was merged with the border and Eastern Cape Technicons to become the Walter Sisulu University. Kayam Finyana was appointed as its interim vice principal, a position he held until December 2007. He was also the university's first substantive executive dean of the Faculty of Health Sciences. In August 2012, when the university was placed under administration, his role was expanded to assist in the office of the vice chancellor. Subsequently, in 2014, he became interim vice chancellor of the Walter Sisulu University. When Kaya retired a few years ago, he was hailed as a colossal figure who had dedicated nearly 30 years to the university's growth and development. Despite having been a heavyweight in the medical field, Mfenyana became a doctor almost by chance. Born in Lady Freer in the rural Eastern Cape in February 1945, he matriculated from the legendary Lovedale High School. After obtaining a two-year teaching diploma at the University of Fort Hare, he taught maths and science at Rhoda High School for a year. He then returned to Fort Hare to do a BSc because he had a passion to become a scientist and because he enjoyed being challenged to think and to solve problems. At the time, he and his peers looked down on medical students as they felt they were learning by rote and that they were not real scientists. However, before he had even graduated with his BSc, a friend suggested he would, should apply for medicine. He did, but still continued with his plan to become a scientist. His trip to university to begin his honours year was however delayed, and on his return he received a telegram accepting him to study medicine at the University of Natal, an offer he accepted with alacrity. Kaya found the first years of studying medicine dull, but in the clinical years, he realized that he had not made a mistake. During internship, he was enthralled by each discipline in which he worked. First, he wanted to be a physician, then a surgeon, and then a gynecologist. What was however abundantly clear to him was that he had, was not interested in private practice until a friend asked him to take care of his private practice in Mount Freer, where his friend under, while his friend undertook speciality training. Kaya would later joke that he was tricked, as this became the impetus for him to specialize in family medicine and a subsequent distinguished career in this field. After his retirement, Kaim Finiana continued to play an active role in medical education. Until recently, he was on the Council of the Health Professions Council of South Africa and has previously headed its conduct, review, and undergraduate education committees. He was also part of a 10-member team who compiled an Academy of Science South Africa consensus study entitled Reconceptualization of Health Professions Education in South Africa, which has become the guide to future developments in health sciences education in this country. In 2011, he was on the Ministers of Health's task team to advise on establishing district clinical teams as part of the re-engineering of South Africa's primary healthcare system. When Kaya retired, he said he would continue to serve 
we had, we, where he was called on to do so. For him, service is about uplifting others and ensuring a more equitable society. He does this by also stressing that family physicians, while caring for an individual, need to do so within the context of both the individual's family and the individual's community. Similarly, he believes that service learning should be about learning and service in equal measure, where the service component is determined by the community based on their needs and thereby ensuring that both students and the community benefit. In its recognition of this commitment to producing clinical graduates who focus on social accountability through community practice, who can be of service in the way he, once the reluctant doctor, has been, that it is an honor for this university to award Kayam Finjana an honorary doctorate of medicine. I call upon the Dean of the Faculty of Science to present a candidate for an ordinary degree and to read the citation. Mr. Vice-Chancellor, I have the honor to present Ms. Lida Hill for the degree of Doctor of Science Honoris Causa in absentia. Ms. Lida Hill is an entrepreneur, philanthropist and visionary whose life work has been transformational in community and global service and the support of research and science worldwide, particularly relating to assisting and promoting women in science, technology and engineering and mathematical fields and the exploration sciences. She graduated from Holland's University in 1964 with a Bachelor of Arts in Mathematics and she attended Stanford University between 1960 and 1961. Her relationship with the University of Witwatersrand extends over the last six years when she became involved at a critical moment in the discovery of Homo Naledi at the Rising Star Cave System. Over the last five years, his support of research into human origins here in South Africa has exceeded 20 million rands. Her early and rapid support of exploration related to the paleosciences and her continued support has proven transformational to the field, allowing for the recovery of over 2,000 individual hominid remains and the mapping and discovery of more than 200 fossil sites by the Hill Exploration Project based at WITS. These include several new hominid sites and important archaeological sites. These fossils and sites are certain to provide generations of South African and global scientists with new and important discoveries related to human origins. Discoveries that will undoubtedly profoundly affect the research output of WITS University over the next decades. Ms. Hill is a vocal supporter of human origins research in the public sphere and actively supports the work of WITS, promoting our work at the university in her many public appearances and lectures. She was instrumental in arranging the university's origin exhibit at the Perot Museum in Dallas, Texas, in cooperation with the National Geographic Society. Ms. Hill has made many contributions to the international society and science. She actively promotes women in science, developing dozens of scientific scholarships for female scientists and explorers, including international scholarships for South African scientists. She created the If Then, She Can program in conjunction, conjunction with the American Association for the Advancement of Science, which aims to support and inspire the next generation of girls to consider and pursue STEM subjects as careers. Lyda is a member of the Giving Pledge she has received awards and recognitions from over 50 US-based and international organizations. She has served on the boards of more than 20 non-for-profit non organizations. It is therefore befitting that the University of Witwatersrand Johannesburg bestows an honorary degree on Ms. Lyda Hill. Mr. Vice-Chancellor, I have the honor to request that you confer the degree of Doctor of Science honoris causa in absentia to Lyda Hill. I now call upon the Acting Dean of the Faculty of Commerce, Law and Management to present a candidate for an honorary degree and to read the citation. Mr. Vice-Chancellor, as Acting Dean of the Faculty of Commerce, Law and Management, I have the honor to present Richard Enthoven for the degree of Doctor of Commerce, Honoris Causa. 
Richard Dick Enthoven is a highly distinguished and successful South African entrepreneur and philanthropist. He was instrumental in building iconic South African and international businesses, including Hollard Insurance, Auto in General, Nando's, Direct Access, and beyond, and Spear Wine Estate. His extensive philanthropic impact on the arts in South Africa is particularly notable for its focus on supporting emerging and young South African artists and building institutions in the arts. At WITS, his legacy has had a profound impact on the WITS Art Museum, where generous catalytic funding over the last eight years has enabled the development of a more than 30 million endowment, an almost doubled staffing complement, and the capacity to catalyze significant additional funding. Enthoven's core personal beliefs around the centrality of the arts and artists to serve as catalysts for societal change has resulted in institutions that deeply value and sustainably include the arts in their operations. Enthoven's father started a small insurance brokering firm called Hollard that Enthoven transformed with his brother Patrick into the largest privately owned insurance company in South Africa. Established in 1980, the group includes the Hollard Insurance Company and Hollard Life Insurance and provides short-term and life insurance as well as investment products. The group, employing more than 4,000 individuals, today boasts over 100 ventures across the insurance value chain and touches more than 6 million policyholders in 18 countries on four continents. He later invested in insurance startup, Auto in general, and remains a significant shareholder. He invested in Nando's in 1986, when there were only two struggling restaurants in Johannesburg. Nando's is now a global food chain, which operates over 1,300 stores in more than 20 countries. In 1993, he purchased Spear Wine Farm, which has been transformed into an acclaimed biodynamic farm center for the visual and performing arts, hotel and conference venue. In 1999, he invested in and beyond, which is today one of the leading luxury adventure travel businesses in Africa and has expanded into Southeast Asia and Latin America. Dick Enthoven's business philosophy was to find and support strong entrepreneurs take a long-term view, and only be involved in relationships that were win-win, never to benefit at someone else's expense. Enthoven has always held the belief that artists are the pioneers of culture and that without the arts, society withers. He has embodied this belief in his love of art, his deep personal relationships with many artists, and the art programs he has initiated and supported. His interest is not in the high profile international artists or investment art, but the emerging artists and performers who interpret, challenge and animate society. He is passionate about the quality and excellence and supporting high talented emerging artists to grow and build their careers. The Spear Arts Trust supports the contribution of art to the South African economy through the administration of an ecosystem of career development opportunities for fine artists. Enthoven has also supported the building of new arts institutions. In addition to the aforementioned support of the Witz Art Museum, he has supported the establishment of the Johannesburg Contemporary Arts Foundation, a nonprofit organization whose mission is to play a role in globalizing contemporary South African art and to act as a catalyst in the imagining of a new contemporary African art institution in Johannesburg. Enthoven's passion for architectural heritage resulted in the restoration of one of Johannesburg's important heritage sites, Villa Arcadia. A favorite quote of his from 16th century Spanish author of Don Quixote is the gratification of wealth is not found in mere possession or in lavish expenditure but in its wise application. Amongst other endeavors that seek to create sustainable change, Yellowwoods, the family holding company, 
also supports the Harambi Youth Employment Accelerator, which they initiated to help transition economically marginalized young people into the economy. The Smart Start Early Childhood Development Social Franchise Initiative to create universal access to early childhood development for four and five-year-olds. PILO to improve educational outcomes in public schooling and a host of think tanks and social justice organizations, including Mapungubwe Institute for Strategic Reflection, the Institute of Economic Justice, the Social Justice Initiative, the Public Affairs Research Institute, and the African Leadership Initiative. The University of the Verwaterstrand Johannesburg is proud to honor Richard Enthoven's contribution to business and art in South Africa and to bestow in absentia a Doctor of Commerce degree honoris causa on him. Mr. Vice-Chancellor, I have the honor to request that you confer the degree of Doctor of Commerce honoris causa on Richard Enthoven. Oh!